the bible says in john 21:25 that um, if all the things about jesus were written of all the miracles of all the teachings what he did did and said is recorded the whole world will not be enough to contain the books the amount of books will which would be which would have been written so what we have in our hands is just enough means which is sufficient for our salvation that knowledge is sufficient for us so god knows what to put in the bible and what is necessary for us to know so we are going to deal with a very important uh, subject today that how to prove that bible is historical or what is written about jesus is very historical before going into that topic i would like to explain briefly four kinds of religion the first kind of religion is called as folk tale what is a folk tale now it's a religion which is followed by a small group of people like a very small community they have their own beliefs local in their local uh, area it's limited only to a small geographical area and they believe and they follow what they like which is suitable there for their community and it has no authentic information or scripture uh, or written record nothing is there just a small group of people believe something and follow that we call it as folk tale second kind of religion we call it as a legend a legend is something which people believe about a person uh, which is not really very true for instance uh, a person is born and he lives and after he dies the people who followed him who like him or people who wrote about him magnify his picture and be, make him a divine person or a supernatural person then people start following that person uh, or believing in that particular uh, religion that is called as legend legend does not have a beginning or uh, a legend will not have clear cut information of what a person tells about himself uh, about the divine character or supernatural aspect of his life it is just after the person dies the followers make him a divine person that is called a legend and we have many religion which is basically a legend the person who started that religion or who is a source of Uh, that religion to be existing never tell uh, told that they are god or they are some supernatural beings it is only their followers did that that is called legend and the third kind of religion in this world is called as a myth and most of the indian religions it falls into this category we call mythology it means the the religious uh, aspects of that religion whether it be a story whether it be a place or a thing or some supernatural event does not have any authentic information nobody knows who told that story nobody will be able to answer your question of how the place look like where is that place today uh, such kind of religion is called as myth or mythology and the fourth kind of religion is called as historical religion historical religion means whatever you believe whatever your religion teaches you can prove it historically first you just believe by faith by faith you accept things but eventually that religion will give you clear cut information of the places of the names of the events which are mentioned in that religion so thinking carefully we have only one religion which we can confidently tell that falls into this historical character is christianity so christianity is the only religion which has historical background so with this introduction we are going to learn about uh, the life and teaching of jesus from this lesson onwards today's presentation onwards we are going to learn very minute details of jesus life jesus life and teachings um 
to begin with jesus christ is a historical character uh, we can say that nobody in this world will deny the existence of jesus some may tell that he was a teacher and some say he was a prophet and some even say that he was a he was the best man ever lived but nobody can deny his existence we christians we believe that he is god he is our savior but everybody else apart from christians also believe in jesus and the interesting aspect is history is divided on the basis of life of jesus it's divided into bc and ad and uh, jesus life and teachings are historical and how do we get information about history secular history or religious history we get information from the books written so also the life and teaching of jesus is surely written down and we call it as biblical history and we are going to learn so many things about jesus life and his teachings so first of all how do we get information about jesus we have two sources two kinds of sources the first source we call it as biblical source or inspired source which is which was inspired by the holy spirit god to write down about jesus under biblical sources we have four categories first thing the four gospels matthew mark luke and john gives us adequate information sufficient information about jesus life and teaching second inspired source we call it as uh, the letters of paul paul in writings so paul was not an immediate Uh, disciple of jesus but still he writes a, a lot of information about jesus because he was inspired he was he had special revelation in first corinthians he mentions that what i have learned jesus himself taught me god himself taught me so paul in letters paul in writings gives us a lot of information about jesus and the third one we call it as agrafa grafa means to write agrafa means which is not written certain sayings of jesus are not written in gospel but they are found elsewhere in the new testament the best example we can get is um, we have is acts 20th chapter 35th verse it says jesus said it is better to give than to receive this were this uh, this saying of jesus is not in the gospel but still we have elsewhere in the new testament such sayings are called as agrafa and these sayings gives us a lot of information about jesus and the fourth source from the bible where we get information of, about jesus is the old testament well most of the times people think that old testament does not talk about jesus it's only new testament but that is very wrong old testament is entirely based on jesus uh, jesus what is going to do how is going to die on the cross and uh, how is going to redeem the earth that was foretold in old testament and uh, very few verses i will uh, a few verses i will list down um genesis 3:15 it talks about how jesus is going to crush satan uh, zechariah 9:9 isaiah 9:1 and 2 isaiah 9:6 um so many uh chapters like isaiah 53 all this talks about jesus micah 5:2 uh so many the entire old testament everywhere you go you can find traces and evidences of what jesus is going to do so the entire bible uh we can uh, read it and study it to get uh, whatever is necessary for our salvation it is written down in the bible and the second source of information okay christians we believe bible we are so confident that god gave us the bible so we don't doubt but uh, what about secular history or non christian history 
or people who are not inspired they also talk about jesus but the fact is they are not inspired and they are not correct always for example there is war going on in ukraine uh, we get information about the war or the pro problem which is going on in manipur we get information but all the information are not correct but nobody can deny the fact that there is problem ukraine has war manipur has war nobody can deny that fact so the information about jesus is not correct elsewhere apart from bible most of the information is not correct but still we have the clear cut evidence that jesus existed he is the savior so non biblical sources i'm just going to list down the sources uh if interested we can do a very detailed study of these sources also first information where we have evidences of jesus life and teaching is in the talmud t a l m u d these are the uh, writings of the rabbis the jewish teachers they didn't like jesus but they still wrote a lot of information about him though they were wrong but still information is there and secondly we have this apocryphal writing apocryphal writing are writings which are not inspired but still they are called gospels we have 25 of them like uh, gospel according to thomas gospel according to peter gospel according to james they are there 25 of them they give a lot of information about jesus life his disciples his crucifixion his resurrection though they are not correct but they are there and the third we have the jewish writers jewish writers like josephus um, tacitus all these people they were contemporary uh, during the first century they write a lot of information about jesus and his disciples and also we have the secular writers um secular writers who were not christian they also wrote a little bit of uh, jesus life and also church fathers the next uh, group we call them as church fathers uh, like clement justin martyr origen augustin and so on and so forth and we have a very popular uh, christian theologist theologian who is called as john bunyan he wrote or he cataloged in fact 86000 uh, statements about jesus which are not in the bible all these writers non biblical writers they wrote down about jesus so uh, john bunyan cataloged about 86000 statements about jesus so we can prove that jesus is not a um, mythological figure he is a historical person a lot of information about jesus is found in bible that is inspired we believe and it is proven and apart from bible we have a whole lot of statements about jesus whether they are true or not but they do give us an evidence that jesus existed so we can believe that bible is true and we are going to talk uh, from the four gospels about the life and teaching of jesus in detail but before concluding this i would like to give a few a uh, few proofs or few things which will enable us to trust the bible the authenticity of the bible first one the authentic picture of palestine you read the four gospels matthew mark luke and john you go across you you go across the four scripture four gospels and you will see that the places the persons or the king's name or the events everything you can go and see in middle east asia you will find all those things now so it is not a imaginary picture it's an authentic picture of the gospels presented in the bible secondly the independency of the gospels four gospels are there we are going to talk th about them in detail in the coming presentations 
every gospel matthew mark luke john it's not identical so many things uh, differ in them but still you have only one gospel in your hand and you read only one gospel it will give you a complete picture of jesus see that's the speciality of gospel they are not interdependent for authenticity they stand alone god inspired matthew god inspired mark luke and john so when they write you read only one gospel you will be convinced if you ask holy spirit god to help you you will be surely convinced that this is true and you will get a picture of jesus and the third evidence why to believe gospels it is the picture of jesus which is painted see if you want to tell uh, that jesus um, we want to paint a very false picture when the writers if they would have been like imagining something and uh, painting a very false picture of jesus then they would have painted him to be a king him to be a military commander that is what jewish people wanted but they paint a humble meek and lowly person who died on the cross they never omit anything which is humiliating see for a jewish male to be spat on the face so humiliating but they write it down see the picture painted of, about jesus will give us the evidence to uh, accept gospel telling they did not lie about anything and the fourth evidence is the manuscript which we have we have in our hands about 5500 original manuscripts the leather parchments the papyrus leaves the manuscripts are there and about 1400 of them are in greek which were written about 2000 years ago and 40 of them the original manuscripts are surely 1000 years old so these manuscripts are there in our hands to believe that the gospel writers did not fake things they did not change anything they wrote it what they believed what was inspired by god and it is unchanged even today see nobody can tell that bible was changed by something or some verses was uh, um, manipulated and changed the original content no because we have the originals with us and the fifth and the last evidence is the life of the people who preached or the early disciples who preached the gospel if we believe something we can live for it but if believe we believe something and we got to die for it the thing should be true nobody will die for something which is wrong see and all the disciples all the early believers they were persecuted they were killed they were martyrs they were ready to die because what they believe is true so also the gospel is very true let us learn about the gospel the life and teaching of jesus from these four gospels in detail in the coming presentation and as we learn as we read the bible let it change our lives and in these last days let us let it equip us to do god's will uh, god's work in a bigger manner and life time is very little so let us learn these things and uh, not only pastors anybody every believer is going to preach in this last days so let us learn these things and preach it and god will help us to accomplish his work in a, in his own way this is our prayer amen